So I co-founded a group called the Progressive Change Campaign Committee, and what we try and do is we try and organize people over the internet who care about progressive politics and moving the country in a more progressive direction to kind of come together, join our email list, join our campaigns, and help get progressive candidates elected all across the country. I think one of the things we found is that if you want to run for office, you know, basically there's a path for doing it, but it's a very corporate controlled path. You hire a bunch of big money consultants, you talk to a bunch of big money donors, you go around to major corporations and speak with their executives and persuade them that you like the things they do. And the result is that most of the people in Congress, you know, are very business friendly, very corporate funded candidates. And what we want to do is build a pipeline to get more progressive and more activist, more individual people to elected to Congress so they can start making real social change. And how do you know you're being effective in that work? Um, I think it's, it's kind of nice that we have this focus on elections because, you know, elections are very clear. There's a deadline, there are two candidates, you know, one you're supporting, one you're opposing, right? And there's a date when you find out which one of you won. And so that you really can't, you know, fool yourself with elections. You can't say, well, you know, we got 90% of the way there. At the end of the day, either your candidate is in office or it isn't, and you can see exactly how much you accomplished and how many votes you needed to go. And so... One of the things I like about it is it gives us this constant sense of exactly what we're achieving, how close we are to getting there, and what more we need to do. And um, why do you do what you do? It's a good question. I mean, I you know, feel very strongly that it's not enough to just live in the world as it is, to just kind of take what you're given and you know, follow the things that adults told you to do and that you know, your parents told you to do and that society tells you to do. I think you should always be questioning. You know, I take this very scientific attitude, that everything you've learned is just provisional, that you know, it's always open to recantation or refutation or questioning. And I think the same applies to society. And I you know, felt growing up, you know, I slowly had this process of realizing that all the things around me that people had told me were just the natural way things were, the way things always would be, they weren't natural at all. They were things that could be changed, and they were things that, more importantly, were wrong and should change. And once I realized that, there was really kind of no going back. I couldn't fool myself into saying, oh, I'm just going to go work for a business and ignore all that. Once I realized that there were real serious problems, fundamental problems that I could do something to address, I didn't see a way to, to forget that. I didn't oh. see a way not to. What do, how did you go about getting active? Um, you know, I'd always been wanting to get active. Like, even when I was in school, I was very frustrated with school. I thought, you know, the teachers didn't know what they were talking about, and they were very domineering and controlling, and that homework was kind of a sham, and it was just like, you know, all the way to pen students together and force them to do busy work. And, you know, I started reading books about, like, the history of education and how this educational system was developed and, you know, alternatives to it in ways that people could actually learn things as opposed to just regurgitating facts their teachers told them. And that kind of led me down this path of questioning things. You know, once I questioned the school I was in, I questioned the society that built the school, I questioned the businesses that the schools were training people for, and I questioned the government that, you know, set up this whole structure. And what, what were the projects or campaigns that you first got involved with? Um, well, like I said, I got interested in, in educational stuff, but I don't think I really got involved in a political campaign. I spent a lot of time you know, after that, wondering what it is that I could really affect. You know, I did a lot of writing and a lot of reading, but a lot of the stuff I read about social change, you know, seemed to come from this model, you know, in, in the revolutions in the 60s, people thought, oh, if we just get enough people together, you know, who are angry, then all of a sudden, magically, this revolution will happen and will take over the country. And, you know, it just didn't make sense to me. I think it, you know, now I, having more background and more context, I think it came out of this experience of watching the Soviet Union where because the Soviet Union was so underdeveloped and you know there weren't very many political structures in place it was true that a small group of people getting a bunch of people angry could kind of take over the whole country and I just don't think that can happen in developed countries like the US or Ireland so I began wondering what is it that you can do in developed countries you know everything seems so ineffective and so powerless and it wasn't until just recently that I started thinking okay the internet provides this opportunity now to raise money to get candidates elected. You know, it used to be there was just no way for a small group of people to go up against the power of big money. 
but one of the things we've seen at PCCC is that you know there's just a couple of us who work there, and in the past year, you know, using nothing but basically computers and you know our own apartments, we've gotten 300,000 people to join our list and raised 1.25 million dollars. I mean, that's just you know three people were able to make a huge difference like that, and that I think the, means the internet really provides this chance where we can start taking on big corporations. And um, as you over the last few years, or as you developed your interest in social activism, have there been any people or ideas or resources or organizations that have really inspired you? Any particular good big thinkers? I mean, the thing that you know really got me thinking along these lines was right before I went to college, I read two books. I read a book, Moral Mazes, by Robert Jackal, which is a study of how corporations work. And it's, it's actually a fascinating book. This sociologist, he kind of picks a corporation at random and just goes and studies the middle managers, you know, not the people who do any of the grunt work and not the big decision makers, just the people whose job is to make sure that things day to day get done. And he shows how, even though they're all perfectly reasonable people, perfectly nice people, you know, you'd be happy to meet any of them, all the things that they were accomplishing were just incredibly evil, right? So you have, you know, these people, just this average corporation, right? They're making decisions to blow out the workers in their factories eardrums, to poison the lakes and the lagoons nearby, to make these products that were filled with toxic chemicals that poison their customers. Not because any of them were bad people that wanted to kill their workers and their neighborhood and their customers, but just because that was the logic of the situation they were in. Another book I read was a book, Understanding Power, by Noam Chomsky, which kind of took this same sort of analysis and applied it to the wider society, which said, you know, we're in a situation where it's, you know, maybe filled with perfectly good people, but they're in these structures that cause them to continually do evil, to invade countries, to bomb people, you know, to, to take money from poor people and give it to rich people, to do all these things that are wrong. And, you know, those books really opened my eyes about just how bad the society we were living in is. And um, is there any key message that you give to anybody watching this interview or listening in? Any key points you would like to encourage people to, to keep in mind when they're thinking about the issues that affect them or what they, the issues that they might want to take action on? Yeah, I mean, I think the most important thing is to realize that you can accomplish something. You know, I know sometimes it feels, you just feel powerless, that you're one small person in this world of big corporations and big evil people and big media companies and so on. There's just nothing you can do. But the fact is, a lot of the reason it seems like that is because people feel powerless. People are afraid to do anything. You know, for a long time I felt, I watched the news and all I saw was this stuff, this corporate propaganda and this kind of anti-activism attacks and I thought, you know, the news media was just inevitably biased against us, that there was just no hope, that the only solution was to create alternative news streams. Now at the P-Trip I found, it's not that the news media is inevitably biased against us, it's that, you know, reporters like all of us are just kind of lazy. You know, they report the stories that people give them, and there are huge companies that are willing to write up stories for them and hand them to them on a silver platter, so all they have to do is type them up. You know, of course they're going to do that. And it turned out when we did the same thing, when we started writing press releases and we started going to reporters and pitching them stories, they were just as happy to write about us as they were about Coca-Cola. And so, you know, because I had believed so long that change was impossible, it precluded me from taking any actions that could have caused that change. And so I think the first step for everyone out there is just to believe that you can accomplish something. Because once you believe that, you know, you're half the way to actually doing something.